What's up Bristles? My name is Shane and welcome to my channel, Bristle Boss. Oh yeah. Today we're gonna to be painting some crypt horrors. Crypt horrors! <laughs> Well, I'll be painting Crypt Horrors, and uh, maybe you can learn something from it. Or if you want to paint along, you can too. But for the colour scheme, we're going to with some nice earthy green palette tones, complemented with some nice purple bruising. Um, there's also be a dash of red, because uh, we got to have some blood. So, the colour scheme I'm going with. It's something like the Abhorrent Arch Regent on the cover of the book. Abhorrent Arch Regent! What a powerful title! Yes! I love this piece of art. So that's why I'm gonna go and try and copy that. Pishaw. Anyway, thanks for sticking this far. Try and enjoy the rest. Okay, so starting off we're going to have our miniatures primed and I've used Mechanica Standard Grey Spray from Citadel. Uh, it's a good neutral primer and here we are just slapping some rack earth flesh all over. Just get it on there, don't need to be neat. And this is how they're going to look once they are done. Next, we're going to get some Athonian Camo Shade and some Lamia Medium. And we're going to mix it together. I usually like to put in the Lamian Medium first, so then I don't contaminate my Lamian Medium with the color that I'm mixing into it. It's got like six or seven drops there, and then... How much Athonian Camo Shade? One, two, just two. That's not a lot at all, but we don't need a lot. There we go, so that's the consistency, it's pretty thin. And we're just gonna smother the miniature with all that color. So once that's all done, this should be how they look when they're dry. Next, coming back with the Athonian camo shade. Uh, no doubt through the duration of this channel you will see that paint come back a lot because it's one of my favorites um, and this one is just a pure Athonian camo shade I think and we're just focusing on some darker areas we want the inside of his arms the front of his torso underside of his neck and his face to be paler so we try to avoid that and if we get any on there that we don't want we just give it a wipe with our finger Next up, we gonna use some Druchi Violet. Again, mixing it with Lamian Medium. I think I did it earthways here, did I? Oh, would you look at me? I put the color in first, it's a bad owl habit. Give it a good mix. We'll check the consistency here before we go near the model. That mix of Lamian Medium and Druchi Violet, we're going to put it on the feet and lower legs. And you can see where I wipe it off to create a slight transition because it will stain the skin that we've done already a little bit and then we wipe it off. And then we're going to do the back where we have all those muscles bulging and throbbing those bony protrusions and sores. Next up we're going to get some pure Druji Violet and we're going to go lower down on the legs where we were um, and kind of try and create a transition where it's lighter the further up you are. Make sure and get betwixt his biscuits with that, add a little bit of shadow, can't be forgetting that and a little tush. And also we go up along the spine to darken that and add a little bit more definition on the little bits of bone spikes that are sticking through his limbs. Now we're just having a look, this is how he's going to look right now. Next up we're going to need Rack Earth Flesh. I'm back with the Athonian Camo Shade. 
Get a good bit of uh, rack out flesh on your palette and add a couple drops of Ethonian camo shade. Three. So three drops of Ethonian camo shade. One big dollop of rack out flesh. And the reason why I'm using these colors together is because I want to keep it in a similar palette. So I have more control over the color that I use for the layers as opposed to trying to match the color layers from premix pots. Bit of a neater brush now. The Regiment brush from Army Painter. The areas we kept the lighter flesh, we're going to just layer that um, with this mix. Um, we're going to avoid the recesses and pull the paint towards where we want the color to be strongest so that it's a little bit lighter, closer to the darker areas of flesh. When it comes to the darker areas of flesh, we're not going to layer this paint on. We're going to use it to highlight. And you see, I use different kinds of highlighting here. Sometimes it's just line highlighting. Sometimes it's dots. Um, use whatever you think um, fits the area you're painting. Next up, we're going to take Pallid Witch Flesh and mix some of that into half of that mix. And also, we're going to take some Decala Lilac and mix it into the other half of the previous mix of Rack Earth Flesh and Athonian Camo Shade. And we're going to use both these colors to highlight the respective areas of the flesh. So the mixture with the Decala, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, Violet, um, we're going to use that to highlight all the purple flesh, the bruised flesh, and the mix with the pallid witch flesh, we're going to use that to highlight that uh, pallid undead flesh. However, we are going to layer some of that a little bit on the lighter areas, such as the torso, the front of it. We're um, also going to do a little bit of that on the underside of the arm. Anywhere where, that we had pale before, we're going to keep it pale. Um, we're just not going to layer as far up as we did with the previous layer. And as well as that, I'm going to add a bit of a sinewy texture. Well, attempt to add a slight sinewy texture to the his uh, chest area by just painting lines across coming from the center of the chest. Again, avoid all the recesses. This is how it should be looking. Pretty happy with that. Next, it's on to Pallid Witch Flesh. I'm just gonna use this on its own, highlight all the light areas, any sharp features on the face. Add small highlights to all of the flesh, except for the purple. Next, make a glaze with the Athonian Camo Shade and Lamia Medium, quite thin, just enough to tint the color and blend our uh, layers together. Uh, we don't want to undo the work we've done by making it too dark. We just want it to be there to kind of tie everything together. Next color I'm gonna grab is Dark Reaper. And we're going to use this to uh, paint the hair on this unit. Next, we're going to do another base color. We're going to use Zandri Dust to do all the bone features. And uh, I use this for the teeth as well, because I want them to be not so pristine white. And then we're going to base coat the claws with a bad and black. Next, we're going to jump back to our washes and we're going to use Seraphim Sepia. Going to use that to cover all the bone. And we're back to Drupti Violet now. A little bit on the tip of our brush and wick it off. That's when we just wipe some of it on some kitchen towel to make sure that we don't have too much on the brush. And we're going to just add a bit more definition to under the cheekbones of the face and kind of add some depth to the eye sockets. Also get some in there in the mouth to darken them up. We're going to come back now with Zandri Dust and revisit the bone areas. And we're going to have this quite thin so that we can layer it and highlight areas. But 
we don't want to do a full solid layer. We want to blend it out a little bit. So we're gonna pull the pigment back towards where we want the color to be strongest and away from where we want to keep some of that uh, seraphim sepia shade. And if you go too much or if you think you've gone too bright, just quickly wipe it off with your finger. It'll be fine. So you're gonna keep doing that and highlight the sharp edges with that same paint. Next, we're gonna do the same thing with a shabbity bone, but we're going to leave some of the Xandri dust showing cause we want to have that transition again. And when it comes to the highlighting the more sharper or defined edges of the bone, uh, we also want to keep that thinner than the previous highlight so that we can see both highlights and the transition that's there. To finish off the bone, we're gonna take some Palette Witch Flesh and the best tip brush we have, I'm using my Winsor Newton Series 7 and we're just gonna carefully highlight all the sharpest edges of the bone with a fine highlight. You can either use the side ear brush on edges that you can get. Some areas you might have to use the tip of the brush and just be careful. Next highlights we're going to apply are to the claws. And for that, we're going to use Nagaroth Knight. So just do a line highlight. Um, it's a very dark purple, so it's not gonna jump out too much against the black. Next up is, I don't know if I can pronounce this right, Zerius purple. Gonna get some serious with some serious purple and we're just gonna apply a finer highlight onto those claws. Next up we're just gonna do a, a dot highlight with a uh, Decala violet. I don't know what to do with these names Ga Games Workshop. Like pretty tricky. Kind of stumble off the tongue. And on one of these crypt horrors he's got some lovely sinewy muscle visible on his back where his spine is just burst out of him. Bloody brilliant. Anyway, gonna take some Bugman's Glow and give that a good solid layer. Um, just be careful, try not to get it onto any of the details we've done already cause although it's easy to fix, you'd rather not have to go back and fix anything. Contrast Black Templar. We're gonna put this on over our claws, our talons and for while we wait for our Black Templar to dry, I'm just gonna take some Averland Sunset and again, we're with the best tip we have. Gonna just paint in the eyes and get a decent layer on there. Once that's done, we're gonna take some, we're gonna go back to the Seraphim Sepia and we're gonna give the eyes a wash. While we have that Seraphim Sepia, I'm just gonna drop a little bit into the little divots that are on some of the protruding bones and also any areas where we might have lost some of that um, kind of nice shadow cause we don't want to undo our highlights. While we wait for that Seraphim Sepia wash to dry, we're gonna go back to our Druchy Violet and we're gonna just cover the Bugman's Glow area in that. When that's dry, we're gonna come back with the Bugman's Glow and re-establish that uh, main color there on that sinew and make sure and leave the druchy violet in the recesses. The next color we're going to use is Cadian Flesh Tone and we're going to do the same thing just smaller surface area and finer highlights. We want to keep some of that previous highlight and layering we did. Then we come to Kislev Flesh. It's going to make those sinew parts really pop and with this part we're mostly doing just edge highlighting. Next up, I'm gonna take some Stegadon Scale Green. We're gonna use the Stegadon Scale Green to pick out each hair on the model. There's not a lot of them, so it's not too much work. Next, we're gonna take Thunderhawk Blue and do the same thing, but of course, same as usual, we're gonna leave some of that previous color showing. After Thunderhawk Blue, we're gonna highlight with Fenrisian Grey. Once the Fenrisian Grey is completely dry on the hair, I give it a full wash of Athonian Camo Shade. Next step, I'm gonna take Rhinox Hide and I'm gonna use it on this one model to paint the leather straps on his bone club. 
Just get a nice good coverage. When that's all dry, we move on to highlighting it with Mon Fang Brown. When more fine brown is done, we move on to XV88 and give another fine highlight. Then we're gonna take Agrex or shade and we're not gonna wash the whole thing here. We're just gonna take a regiment brush, the tip on that should be fine enough. And we're just gonna paint the Agrax Earthshade into the recesses on these leather bindings. While we have the Agrax Earthshade, I decided to darken up some of those shadowed areas and dirtier areas of the club. Also put up where we went in with Seraphim Sepia, but obviously don't undo what we've done with Seraphim Sepia. Now, while that is all drying, the wash we put in the eyes should be dry by now. So we're gonna take Averland Sunset and re-establish the main color of the eye, but of course, leave our Seraph and Sepia wash in the recesses. Next, we're gonna use Ungar Flesh to make those eyes pop a little bit. I tried to do something else here with the eyes by dotting them first with red before attempting to dot them with black. I was trying to create the illusion of them being possibly bloodshot. I dotted the eyes off camera because I just, I'm still figuring out my camera setup and it was just easier for me to do it this way without them looking terrible. Before I move on to the last part of this model, I'm going to use some Carber Crimson Wash to tint around the mouth and around the teeth. And when that's dry, we're going to take Blood for the Blood God from Games Workshop, technical range, and going to put some of that in the mouth between the teeth, running down the chin, a few splashes. It's mess of business tearing up your supper on the battlefield. So we're just gonna add a few splashes of blood on his face. Also, he's flailing those limbs around, scratching at things. So there's gonna be some blood on those spikes too that are coming out the arms. And make sure and get a healthy dose of blood on those. He's tearing the enemy apart. He's pulling their insides out. He's having a good old feast. He's nibbling on the enemy. Forgot to mention, before I applied blood for the blood god to the miniatures, I gave it a quick varnish using Vallejo matte varnish through my airbrush. And that finishes off our unit of crypt horrors. Apologies for the ad hoc makeshift and wobbly turntable. I do plan to get a proper one uh, that will fit in my light box so I can use better lighting. As you'll notice here, the lighting shifts a little because I am beside a window and the sun decided to come out from behind the clouds and then go back in. So it's a bit of a mess. I do apologize. I will get better at this. So this has been my first YouTube video. If you enjoyed it or learned anything from it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification button. Don't forget to tell your friends. Hopefully you enjoyed me being a bit of an oddball and painting away here. This is by no means a high standard of painting, but it's more than adequate for having a good few games with your old buddies. Tell me what you think down in the comments. Any requests or anything for future videos, let me know. I will be doing more painting and some sculpting and modeling videos. Have a good day. Look after yourself. Look after each other. And be good to everybody. See you next time. Oh yeah.